that technique, right? The tucking of the hips back to cause the quad to contract harder. This is something that I know from know of from posing and bodybuilding. When you're performing your front poses, poses where you're facing the crowd or the judges, when you throw your hips back as far as you can, it tightens up your quads. It shows all the lines all the way to the top. What does that mean? Your quad gets a better contraction from its insertion at the hip all the way down to the knee. I just applied that on this leg extension and wow, I think that's a game changer. All right, all right, heavy duty crew. It is. Wednesday, September 25th, we are back at the Muscle. We are at the Dungeon, Louisiana's version of Temple Gym, and I am Dorian Yates. It's going to be an absolute blood and gut session today. I am not feeling 100%. My neck is more fucked up than the Kenyan Parliament. Mm. I'll let Eric throw in an edit of that. But uh, so yeah, just a lot of uh, unideal conditions at work. I'm an equipment operator by trade, so I've been spending the last week like this, and it's been terrible. I've been uh, having some pretty sick, pretty gnarly, pretty nasty migraines. I got worked on yesterday, but I just don't feel right in the head. Add to that the massive increase in food uh, starting the competition prep for nationals in December. I am bogged down. So I'm hoping that after the first max effort set, all the brain drugs are going to come loose and I'm going to start feeling real nasty and mean. So one other thing that'll be different today is my man Bailey is going to be operating the camera for me. What if you've up, heavy duty crew? If you've seen the uh, some of the shots and pictures I've got from the win at the South Central, that was Bailey took all that stuff from the crowd. Good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, client of mine. So he's going to be the tripod since I left it at home. So it, it might be better today. I don't think it could get any worse than my normal unprofessionalism, but that's going to be it. So what are we going to be doing today? Because every other workout has changed since starting this prep, right? So moving forward with legs. Um, I'm going to be prioritizing the glutes and the hamstrings. So we're going to start off, uh, we're going to train calves first. Then we're going to prioritize the hamstrings, the RDL. We figured out how to do that, that pit shark with the blocks underneath it for the dead stop. We're going to keep that in. Then we're going to move to a lying hamstring curl. I just like it more than seated right now. It's just what I want to do. So fuck you. I don't care. I know that the other one's more optimal. I know. I know. Uh, so... After that, we're gonna move on to quads. I am going to do the seat back leg press that we had from last time. I can increase my leverage so much more, put so much more pressure on the quads and use less weight. So that's less fatigue. Now we're gonna move on to abduction, adduction. And if I can stomach it, we'll throw in a set of quad extensions in there. Actually, I think everything I just named was the last leg workout. So maybe leg day won't change, but that's how, that's what my mind has planned going into it. If I have some uh, creative insight, things may change, but that's looking like it's pretty solid. Well, the pre-workout's pre -workout's kicking in and I'll see you guys on the top set of calves. All right, so I'm putting this in the workout because a comment was made on an earlier YouTube video about, you know, hey, you should really warn people that they need to be warming up and they shouldn't be moving into sets like this cold because someone could really get hurt. Well, fellow, you must be new to my content because I, tell everyone to warm up. And most importantly, I tell people to do whatever they feel they need to do to be confident in moving into a top set. So just talking about warm up, Bailey's warming up right now. I just did a little warm up set. Warming up is about increasing the core temperature of the muscle. It's literally about making it warm. What we don't want to do during our warming up is generate fatigue. I want to be able to approach my top set and give as much effort and energy into that as possible. So really what I'm doing is I'm getting a little bit of blood flow into the muscle, making it track, uh, getting a feel for the weight. So I am preparing my neurology for the load that my top set's going to be. And it's really that simple. All right. So some reps to warm and move some blood, prepare your nervous system to approach the top set and then go in and kill it with little to no fatigue. And it's really that simple. And after your first top set exercise, so now I'm not going to say that this calf press is going to set me up to be warm moving on to train the rest of my legs. But let's say I was starting off with leg press. After my first set of leg press, my quads are warm to move on to leg extension. My adductors are warm to move on to adduction. My abductors are warm to move on to abduction. My hamstrings through the isometric holding that they were doing during those crazy ass reps are ready to be go to go in and be trained. And the only thing I'll do is maybe one set to just 
groove the movement pattern of whatever movement it is I'm going in to do. So warming up is really that simple. It doesn't need to be something that's over complicated. Frankly, it's not, it's not. And if you don't like those guidelines that I just gave, do whatever it takes for you to mentally be ready for your top set. That's the bottom line of it all is you need to do whatever it takes for you to be mentally ready because what's most important in training is effort. You need to be in a mental headspace where you can give 100% of your momentary effort into a set. That's how you achieve the greatest amount of stimulus possible. And that all starts with the mind. The mind moves the body. So get the mind ready, whatever it takes. Today, I'm going to try something slightly different. So the newest research has come out and it confirms that the calf grows the most from the completely stretched position to about flat footed. So I'm going to attempt to do my reps in that form today and see how it goes. I've always done full range of motion. I don't have amazing calves. I don't have bad calves. The best calf growth I ever got was from simply doing calf raises off the floor, which didn't incorporate the lengthened position, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So it says lengthened position with a straight leg. So let's do it. I didn't like the way it felt, but I hit failure. <laughs> oh, wow. So here we have the um, Hit Shark RDL. I'm gonna go up and wait on this one. There's a fine line between going as heavy as I can. The deal with this is, is when you're overbalancing that much weight in front of you, I could set what I deadlift on here, but it's not gonna be the same movement that I'm digging into my hamstrings and glute with as I'm warming up. So it's to find that deep balance. I don't wanna overshoot. So I'm gonna move up to four plates aside and see if I can maintain that balance. Get my reps down because they were very high last week. But most, what's most important is I wanna keep that movement pattern that I've been using and really dig into my glutes and hamstrings. Um, I'm praying that my IT band doesn't give me trouble. I felt two twinges as I was warming up. I gotta train, man. Lord, protect my body. My grip is wanting to give. Whoo! Erectors, glutes, hamstrings. Holy shit, the sweat was pouring off of them. What a set. All right, isolateral, lying leg curl, and the heaviest machine I've ever experienced. I guess really the cue to keep in mind is, is find that leverage point for your body where your hips are turned over right here and just keep your hips pressed into the implement. That's gonna stop you from pulling with your glutes gonna help isolate your hamstrings more but don't be neurotic about it it's not that complicated just keep it simple stupid and this is gonna be heavy as shit <clears throat> Yeah! 
let's pause that one. I don't know that I'll get another rep. My hamstring is fucking burnt. No. Oh, and I'll just go ahead and go right into the right leg. The left one's my weaker of the two, so that's the one I wanted to train first. The tension is so immense on my hamstrings. Like, it's scary. It feels like they're gonna pop. That's why you'll notice, like, toward the end of the set, I came up with my opposite leg to help catch it and help it on that negative because it's just, it's wicked, man. This cam system is, it's crazy. All right, what we learned last back, back day, what? <coughs> What we learned last leg session was that we could put this seat further back and oh my God, it um, absolutely fucking destroys your quads. And uh, yeah, I'm about to do that. So we're going to, we're gonna go up, I think a plate on each side. I either had five and a half or five last time. So I'm just gonna go to six. One more um, addition I'm gonna make is I'm actually gonna bottom out these. So I'm gonna go as deep as possible. Try to focus on pushing with both of my legs equally. And I want to absolutely smash my quads. So I'm in a fatigue state. We did two of the hamstring movements first. We did a set of quads before we got, I'm sorry, a set of calves before we got here. So I'm really wanting to put the pressure on the quads. So without further ado, I felt like I was gonna pull my forearm because of how hard I was having to pull myself into the seat. But my quads definitely gave out at the end. Yeah, we're done. Just, you can turn it off. I'll get out here in a minute. All right, so I already did the, <laughs> I already did the top set for this leg. I came in thinking it was gonna be a warm up. It indeed was not. With a very minor tweak, I just learned something quite valuable. Maybe I had this in the past and forgot about it, but it's definitely a modification of technique. Let me explain. So when you're back into the seat, if you could then tuck your hips back, you're gonna feel this. You're gonna feel where these quads tie into the hip. So you on this side, right here, it is absolutely torched. I did this on the on the set for this leg and oh my God. So this gets such a good stimulation and you can feel your quads pulling completely independently. Um, it's just a much different feeling and it uh, completely exhausts and uses every fiber of your being. I'll demonstrate. Tuck the hips back. See, see the quad? See the difference? The difference? It's under tension right here. That. Ah. I think we're gonna make some big legs.
Okay. That could have went heavier. This leg is a lot stronger than the other, noted. So that technique, right, the tucking of the hips back to cause the quad to contract harder, this is something that I know from know of from posing and bodybuilding. When you're performing your front poses, poses where you're facing the crowd or the judges, when you throw your hips back as far as you can, it tightens up your quads. It shows all the lines all the way to the top. What does that mean? Your quad gets a better contraction from its insertion at the hip all the way down to the knee. I just applied that on this leg extension and wow, I think that's a game changer. Enjoy that. All right, so our finisher is just that it's the end of our workout and it is not something convoluted to make sure we cover everything we already trained over again. We're simply gonna hit our adductors and our abductors. We're gonna do it in a superset fashion, knock it out, get it out of the way, get home so we can start eating and start recovering. Not much to say. Either way would work following that quad extension. If I really wanted to double up on that outside of the leg and that hip tie-in, I could start off with abduction, but I think that would just kind of be double it up and beating a dead horse because believe me we killed that horse we beat that horse with hammers and then lit it on fire and blew it up with tannerite so i'm gonna just hit adductors first Workout's over. See you guys for arm day. I'm out.